what is on tap in this live stream of Coos's Corner that I like to call Coos's Corner Happy Hour. Here on an afternoon on Monday, we are going to talk about conference realignment. There's been more news broke today and over the weekend regarding conference realignment, certain schools, certain conferences. And instead of trying to do multiple videos on this, I decided to just drop a live stream for you guys today, let you guys kind of pick where the conversation goes regarding these topics. We're going to talk about today, Oregon. Apparently, he has initiated talks with the Big Ten. Florida State looks to be aggressively looking to get out of the ACC. We will talk about what's the next move for the Pac-12 as some stuff has come out regarding conversations about their TV rights negotiations with ESPN. So let's get started. What's up, Stephen Strait? Thanks for hopping in, man. Uh, and reminder for everybody, as you hop on here, whether you're watching this live or you're watching it once it's posted, pre, uh, the pre-recorded version on demand, please hit the like button. The first thing we're going to talk about is Oregon. Oregon, according to a report by Brett McMurphy of the Action Network, apparently Oregon has initiated talks with the Big Ten officially, according to his sources. His sources also told him that neither Big Ten Commissioner Kevin Warren nor Oregon's outgoing president nor Oregon's athletic director were present at these talks in Chicago. So who initiated the talks? Well, some reports are saying that it may have been Phil Knight himself, the Nike guy. That Nike might be Phil Knight might be trying to basically single-handedly almost get Oregon into the Big Ten or even the S. There's even been some reports SEC, but I think it's more the Big Ten. I think the Big Ten and Oregon may have started discussions. It looks like it's just prim, uh, just initiated is all. Uh, Oregon wants to see whether they are fit for the Big Ten Conference. It looks like that's what Brett McMurphy is saying in his reporting. Um, so it's, it, I'll, I'll be anxious to get your guys' thoughts on this. Do you think Oregon stands a chance to get into the Big Ten or not? Or do you think this is just all uh, horse manure? And do you think it is Phil Knight that's having these discussions? Uh, and, you know, there's been a lot of people on social media saying, well, then if, if Warren nor Shield, who's the outgoing president, nor their AD wasn't involved, and who was involved? Well, guys, we got to think. There's, there's university. There's obviously there's Phil Knight. There are assistant ads that work for these universities. Conferences have assistants that work there. There's, you know, you know, usually a deputy conference commissioners or assistant assistant conference commissioners that work for these conferences. They could be talking with one another. And it was just, if it was just the initial conversations, you know, it probably didn't have a need for the big players to be in the room just yet, because all they're doing is picking up the phone or, or sitting down at the table saying, hey. We want in the Big Ten. That's how the conversation gets started. Let's see, uh, what's up, Jordan? What's up, man? How you doing? Glad to see you hop on. Everybody go check out Country Roads webcast, especially if you're a West Virginia fan. He covers all things West Virginia Mountaineer football. Josh Scritchfield. What's up, Josh? Barbara hopping in. Watching from dorm in Boar. Don't know what that means. Uh, roll ears. What's up, Ty? J.A. Jones. What's up? Thanks for watching from England, my man. That's awesome. Jordan says, do you think the TV deal along with this report of Oregon are going to force the Big 12 to expand even further in a much shorter time frame than they initially expected? I don't think so, Jordan. I think everything's going to hinge on what, number one, what the Big 10 does. Does Oregon go to the Big 10? Uh or not, and also, what does the ESPN deal look like for for uh, the Pac-12? Uh, according to, which I'll get to this later, so I don't want to spoil, spoil it, but uh, John Canzano, who covers Oregon, uh, and who's been really active on Twitter during this whole thing, he, he put up some stuff on his uh, Twitter account. He reported on some stuff earlier that uh, says, you know, basically the, the Pac-12 talks with ESPN is going pretty good right now, they think. So we'll see. Uh, Borman Hall is dorm hall here. Oh, okay, that's cool. Thanks for thanks for letting me know. I wasn't sure what that meant. Uh, K. Do says greetings from Jayhawk Country. Keep up the great work. Thanks, K. Do. I appreciate you hopping on here. It's good to have UK fans or KU fans, I should say. KU fans. Got to get that right. KU fans on here. Support my stuff. I appreciate you guys. But no, I I, I don't think I think the Big Twelve will probably be patient, wait and see what happens. If Oregon does end up in the Big Ten, then I think that will definitely start a domino effect and a snowball effect to where you'll see some of these 
schools that have been rumored to be talking to the Big 12 might actually uh, take shape. But until that happens, I don't know that anything's going to happen. I think we're kind of all just waiting to see what Oregon does and then also what kind of uh, data the Pac-12 gets back from ESPN and the other networks they're negotiating with right now on their TV deal. Uh, Jay Jones says, my pleasure. Kuzis Corner Rock. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. But uh, for those of you who may not have heard about it, the report about Oregon, I'll read a little bit of it. I'm not going to read it verbatim. You guys can look it up for yourself. But basically it says, Oregon has initiated preliminary discussions with the Big Ten in Chicago to determine if the Ducks are compatible in the conference. Sources told the Action Network. Outgoing University of Oregon President Michael Shield, Oregon AD Rob Mullins, who, by the way, is a West Virginia alum, for those of you who don't know, and Big Ten Commissioner Kevin Warren were not involved in the discussions in Chicago. Another source said, last week the Big Ten signed a seven-year media rights deal. Uh, he goes on to talk about their deal. Then it says, last month Action Network reported the Big Ten would expand beyond 16 schools and was targeting Notre Dame along with Oregon, Washington, Stanford, and Cal from the Pac-12. Those plans have not changed, sources said last week. Regardless of whether Notre Dame joins the Big Ten or remains independent, the league still wants to add more Pac-12 schools to help reduce potential travel concerns for USC and UCLA, sources said. So it looks like the Pac, and we all remember there was an interview, oh, and he goes on to talk about this, Warren, in an interview with HBO Real Sports that aired that airs Tuesday, which is tomorrow, said he could foresee the Big Ten eventually expanding to 20 teams. So this would fit that. If they go out and get Oregon, Washington, Stanford, Cal, that puts them at 20. Uh, you know, it'll, it'll be, I'll be anxious to see whether Notre Dame eventually joins. I don't think Notre Dame is going to join, at least not in the immediate future. They may join a few years down the road, but if this deal that Notre Dame is said to be getting from NBC goes through, then I don't think Notre Dame joins. I think they don't need to because they're going to get the money they need from NBC. By the way, guys, before I forget, everybody, please hit the like button as you're hopping onto this live stream. Helps get more people watching. Kim Jamondo says, where will the Mountaineers end up when all the smoke settles? I hope SEC. Yeah, I do too, Kim. Uh, I always said that would be a dream scenario for us to get in the SEC. Uh, probably a long shot at this point. If SEC expands, to, I don't think we get in the SEC unless they expand past 20 teams. If they go to 24 teams, I think we have a chance. If not, I don't think we do because I don't think we're going to be in the top four teams on their list. And it all boils down to the fact that we're just not in a big enough market. We do we do bring in some of the Pittsburgh market, but not all of it. Uh, but I think nowadays market size is is a real big deal to these to these conferences and to these TV networks. And, unfortunately, we're just not in a huge market. And even the Pittsburgh market is only the 26th largest market in the country. So it's not like it's a, you know, a massive market. And we only capture a portion of that because Pitt gets some of it. Penn State gets some of it. But it is a new market nonetheless for the SEC, so that might be intriguing to them because right now the SEC is not in that market. Uh, so that that might help out. It gets the SEC into a new market, more households they can sell their SEC network in, sell subscriptions in, things like that. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is the report that came out about Florida State. Apparently, Florida State, their, I guess their president was talking to a group of community leaders at an event and talked about how they are looking, you know, being aggressive in conference realignment. I'm trying to find the article for you. Here it is, All Seminoles, uh, Fan Nation, which is a uh, part of Sports Illustrated. It says, In July, Noel Game Day reported that Florida State is in the process of exploring a move to a new conference. The Seminoles have had discussions with the SEC and Big Ten since last summer. Both conferences have displayed an interest in adding the university to their group of current members, along with other schools in the ACC. For the first time, Florida State University President Richard McCullough com commented on where the Seminoles stand in conference realignment. While speaking at the Tallahassee Chamber of Commerce conference on Saturday, McCullough said that Florida State will be very aggressive in its pursuit to remain competitive. And here's a quote. It's something I'm spending a lot of time on, and we're getting a lot of help. McCullough said, we're trying to do anything we can to think about how we remain competitive. Florida State is expected to win. We're going to be very aggressive. 
The article goes on to say that McCullough's comments came in the aftermath of the Big Ten signing the largest meteorite deal ever by a conference. And it says the duration of the respective contracts mean the Big Ten will renegotiate its meteorite deal again before the SEC's deal with ESPN expires in 2034. That's, that's pretty key right there. Uh, Big Ten will get to renegotiate their deal before the SEC does. Uh, so they could end up not only making more money than SEC now, but even more in 2034 before the SEC gets the chance to broadcast their new deal. Uh, now, another thing, and I failed to mention this, uh, and that's where I want to, regarding this, I want to talk about the, SC, the ACC grant of rights deal. Now, most people I have talked to that know anything about legal issues, legal legalities, things like that, have told me that these grant of rights deals are almost impossible to get out of. Some of my fellow podcasters, like Outlaw of College Football, he disagrees. He thinks that the ACC teams will be able to get out of this grant of rights deal somehow because he sees maybe uh, up to eight teams potentially saying, hey, we want out and, and agreeing to get out at the same time. I personally don't think it's going to be that easy. Number one, I don't know that there's eight teams that are attractive enough to the Big Ten and the SEC to get out at the same time. So I don't know that I agree. I disagree with that law of college football on that. I, I think if any of the ACC teams move, it's going to be several years down the road. That's just my opinion. Uh, I could be totally wrong on that, and this whole thing could could go could go bonkers. And eight teams could come to the table and say, "Hey, we're getting out." You get to see, you know, two or three go to the Big Ten, two or three go to the SEC, and even maybe a couple go to the Pack or the Big Twelve or something like that. But I don't see that happening. I think it would be an extremely rare circumstance circumstance i keep coming back to this if grant of rights deals were that easy to get out of i think texas and oklahoma would be getting out of their grant of rights deal with the big 12 much sooner than they are uh, but what this comment by florida state shows us by florida state's president shows us is that they are apparently trying florida state is looking at all their options this tells me they probably have people working behind the scenes trying to figure out a way, if there is a way to get out of this grant of rights deal or not. Um, and they're probably willing, maybe they're willing to go to court and fight it. You know, who knows? That's very possible. Uh, but it's going to take more than one school, I think, to make it happen. But there are, have been reports that the SEC and Big Ten are both also talking to Miami. So if that's the case, maybe you see Florida State and Miami jump ship. Maybe you see North Carolina and Virginia jump ship. But you still need four more schools. So who else jump ship? You see Clemson maybe jump ship. There's five. Who else? Virginia Tech maybe six. But I, I just don't see it, guys. I just don't see why these ACT. I don't see eight schools. I don't see the Big Ten taking four ACC schools. Number one, and I don't see the SEC taking four of them. They might take two apiece, but that still you still need six to get out of out of the grant of rights. Could the Big Twelve come into play? Maybe. But the Big 12 is not in that great of shape either, and I don't see ACC schools being willing to leave the ACC for the Big 12 when they could be going backwards in revenue. You know, I just don't see where that would make any sense for these ACC schools unless they're guaranteed or are getting some type of feedback from, some, from, from an analyst saying that, hey, the Big 12 is going to be in better shape when they renegotiate in 2025 if they add your school. For example, does the Big 12 go get Virginia Tech or a Pitt or uh, an NC State or a school like that or, or even go up north and get a Syracuse or a Boston College to get the Northeast market? Now, there's a lot of things you know that they could do, but would those teams really move the needle enough to make it worthwhile for them to leave the ACC for the Big 12? I just don't know that that's the case. Thomas Pitt says he's all for Pitt in the Big 12. I'd love it, man. Get this rivalry back together. Where we can play this game every year. Provo Cougar fan, Pitt, Louisville, and maybe a VT or UVA edition of the Big 12 will help West Virginia Big 12. I hope I wholeheartedly agree. It would also help Cincinnati. Uh, the only thing about Louisville, I thought about this, the only thing I don't – Louisville and Cincinnati almost share a market. They're only about 90 miles apart. So I don't know that adding Cin Louisville really helps a whole lot as far as new market. Now, Louisville is a good brand, especially on the basketball side. So – you know, and they're and they're and they're on the come up in football, so I you know it wouldn't be a bad addition necessarily. I'm not throwing shade at Louisville, but I think it would be if you want to go grab new markets. I think you'd be better off getting a Virginia Tech, uh, a Virginia, which I don't think I think Virginia is going to the uh, SEC or Big Ten. But you go you go get a school in a market you don't have is is what I'm thinking. Uh, that's just my opinion. 
Billis Vanillas is on here, folks. I think this is the first time he's ever stopped on one of my live, hopped on one of my live streams. What's up, Millis Vanillas? He says, "Good morning, everyone. Roll tide, roll." Uh, K. Do says, "What do you think the Pac-12 media deal needs to be to hold that conference together?" From what I'm hearing, what I'm reading, K. Do it needs to be in the neighborhood of thirty-five to forty million dollars. They think if it's thirty-five to forty million, then it'll probably keep the conference together. If it's below that, if it's down around thirty million, then they don't. A lot of a lot of the media doesn't seem to think that's going to be enough to hold it together. But we'll see. August Pitt says, "I believe if the Big Twelve would grab anybody, it would be Miami and Pitt, and maybe UNC." I think so, August Pitt. But I believe those schools. I think especially UNC and Miami are already being talked about as future members of the Big Ten or the SEC. Both of those schools seem to be attractive. And we all know that the Big 12 doesn't hold the same weight that those two conferences have. We can't pay as much. So I don't see I don't see the Big 12 getting those schools. I think they would move on to one of the bigger conferences first. Pitt maybe. Uh, I don't think Pitt, no offense, but I don't think Pitt would be first in line for either of those conferences. They might be a second four in, so to speak, for the SEC, I mean for the uh, Big 10. Uh, but I don't think they're on the top four list. Uh, M. D. M. D. M. Dwight says backwards in revenue would be hard for an ACC school. They would make more in Big Twelve as well as Big Ten SEC. Who stays in ACC without Clemson, FSU, Miami? Yeah, good point. Um, great point there. Grant Wiley Esquire says Notre Dame W sends UCF to shore up the ACC. That would be great uh, if it shores it up. Uh, I'd love to be in a conference with, with those schools, with Notre Dame and and uh, and those ACC schools. Owen Sapelnik, thanks for hopping on. Owen says, so where do you think West Virginia fits into all this? I don't know, man. I'm, the longer this thing drags out, the more nervous I get about it. Uh, and it seems more, and it seems like every time there's an expansion, they want to talk about market size and how big a market is. And it seems like these big cities is where everything's moving toward. You know, and that worries me about West Virginia because West Virginia is not a big city. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it's a small state. We don't have any major markets in our state. We do get a part of the pit market. Uh, but is that enough to move the needle? I don't know. And then HBAR Farkle, thanks for hopping in, brother. He's a member of Kuz's Corner. If you guys want to join HBAR Farkle as a member, uh, you can hit the join button right below the, my videos. Uh, says, I am really worried about what, where whatever you ends up. Me too, man. Me too. Uh, our academics will keep us out of the Big Ten, and I've, I'm afraid that our market size keeps us out of the SEC. But there at the end, though, like I said earlier, it would give the SEC a brand new market that they're not in right now, which which is a good thing. So that's that's the one thing we would have going that in our tradition, and I feel like culturally we fit in the SEC. We have a very passionate fan base who love football. Uh, you know, we're the flagship school in our state, so that bodes well. The SEC seems to like those types of programs. August Pitt says I think Pitt would be first in line, but not picked first, meaning Pitt is on the first round of choices because two natural rivals of you since he Pitt. Oh, with the Big 12, I agree, Talkers Pitt. I'm talking about uh, Big 10 and, and SEC. I think they're. I think the teams that they're eyeing the most are Virginia, Miami, Florida State, and UNC. I think those are the four schools from the ACC that are being eyed by, by the Big 10 and, and the uh, SEC. Big 12, obviously, yeah, Pitt would be a, to me, Pitt would be a good fit in the Big 10 or Big 12 rather. Uh, but there again, do they want to duplicate a market? What would help though? We all know that the West Virginia Pitt rivalry brings eyeballs. People will watch that game, and it would help as far as uh, TV ratings go. So that I think it would be a great idea to add Pitt. Paul Riggs says there are Mountaineers all over the country and adds to our market. Absolutely, Paul. And by the way, Paul's another member. Uh, Paul's a Mountaineer Maniac level member. So go there again. Take advantage of the perks I have to offer there. You get discounts on merch, uh, early access to some special videos, uh, things like that. Endo Nuts says, between NIL and super conferences, college football is shrinking the market. This could be a huge downfall. I agree, man. I don't like it either. Uh, but unfortunately, it's where we're headed, and I don't think there's much we can do about it at this point. We just have to kind of suck it up and, and, I guess, complain about it is all we can do at this point, right? But we were talking about Florida State looking for new conference home. Yeah, Florida State, their president has now been open about them looking to – he didn't come out and specifically say they're looking to – to join a certain conference or anything like that. He just said they're looking to be aggressive when it comes to realignment to keep Florida State competitive. So that tells me they're exploring all options. 
there again, I go keep going back to the grant of rights. It's pretty dang binding from everything I'm reading and hearing from people who, who would know. I've talked to attorneys about this. They tell me that the only way this grant of rights falls through, there's two ways. Either, either up to eight teams leave the conference at once. So half the conference would have to leave, over half the conference. Or ESPN just decides they want out of the deal. And why would, and here's the part I come, come back to why would ESPN want ACC to fold? They're paying the ACC below market value right now. They're paying the ACC, what, $35 million a year ballpark per team? So why would they want the ACC to blow up and these teams move to the SEC and the Big Ten where they have to pay them even more? <laughs> That's not a good business. Businesses want to pay you less money, not more money. It's, it's called Economics 101, man. The more money you have to pay, that comes out of your pocket. ESPN doesn't want more money coming out of their pocket. And if you destroy the ACC altogether, and a lot of these teams get pushed put into conferences that aren't even – like, for example, why would they want Florida State to go to the Big Ten when that would – that means Florida State games wouldn't even be on ESPN anymore. That would be less inventory for ESPN to air on Saturdays. Right now, ESPN is a primary carrier of ACC games. Why ruin that? The only way I see ACC renegotiating this deal is if they see that, hey, this thing's collapsing on us. We, we're in danger of losing these teams to other conferences uh, like, the S, like the Big Ten. When Then we would lose their games. We wouldn't have access to their games anymore. So let's renegotiate this and keep the ACC whole, help them make more money so that we can keep the relationship going and keep the schools in the conference. That's the only way I see it making sense. Uh, if ESPN decides they want to do that, if they see this thing imploding on itself and they say, hey, we got to renegotiate this, baby, let's do this, then maybe the ACC uh, will is willing to pay out more money. Now, if that's the case, then that might strengthen the ACC and these teams don't want to leave anymore, which I think would be a good thing for college football, to be honest. Maybe it includes some expansion. See if I catch up on the comments here. We've got uh, Huffer Billy Paul. Thanks for hopping on, man. ESPN wants four ACC teams in the SEC. Uh, long play is SEC, not ACC. Now, that would make sense. They're just looking at the future. Uh, what's up, Benny the Butcher? Paul Riggs again says, come on, all your people watching, give a thumbs up for this video. Please do. Give me that thumbs. Hit that thumbs up button, please. Thanks, Paul. Talkus Pitt says, Pitt would def have to go to the Big 12. People won't agree, but Penn State would pull something shady to keep it pit out. Dude, and that stuff happens. It's happened to West Virginia. Uh, Maryland kept us out of conferences before and, and other schools as well. SEC knows viewership is priority, not a year or decades old names. I agree with that. Leo Cole, thanks for hopping on, man. Do you believe the SEC will be going after more Big 12 teams? I've heard the Big 10 are looking at Texas. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see the SEC maybe go after maybe Oklahoma State, but there again, they already have the Oklahoma market, so why would they need Oklahoma State? Uh, Big Ten going after Texas. Don't know what where that benefits. Uh, there is a rumor. I have seen a rumor on Twitter that the Texas has yet to sign the SEC Granite Rights deal, uh, which if that's the case, you know, maybe they're still on the open market, so to speak. I don't know. Uh, thumbs up for sure. Thanks, up for Billy. Talkus Pitt, thumbs up. Thanks, man. Appreciate everybody hopping on. Uh, one thing I want to mention, too, going back to the Oregon thing a minute, I, I almost forgot about this. But Oregon, if, if they want, if they want to get into the Big Ten bad enough. Why, and and, and we see, and the Pac, other Pac-12 schools see that Oregon's wanting out so bad, why would they be willing to sign a grant of rights right now? Because this shows me that the Pac-12 could still be a sinking ship. Oregon has been described by some as the tentpole school holding the Pac-12 together. If that's the case, why would the other schools sign a grant of rights agreement knowing Oregon's going to be out soon, or Washington for that matter? So that's something, something too, that I think people uh, may not be thinking about. Scotty B. the Better King, thanks for hopping on. Definitely shows Oregon doesn't want to stay in Pac-12. 
I agree. Uh, I mean, Oregon, Phil Knight's going to do everything in his power to get Oregon into the SEC, into the Big Ten more than likely. I don't know that the SEC's uh, at play for Oregon. Oregon and Washington are together in any moment. Yep, I agree with that. I think, and I think both of them are big, are attracted to the, to the Pac-12. I mean, to the Big Ten in certain ways. Uh, I think Washington fits both academically and from a brand standpoint. I think Oregon fits from a brand. I don't know that Oregon fits academically, but you know, there'd be a great brand for them to get. And uh, and heck, I wouldn't rule Oregon to the SEC out at some point. To be honest, uh, if they can't get into the Big Ten, why not go try for the SEC? SEC can extend their footprint to the West Coast, get to some Northwest school in their in their conference or or multiple Northwest schools in their conference. Oregon's a flagship school in their state. Why not, right? But I'd I'd love to see Oregon in the Big Twelve, to be honest. Uh, but I just don't know if it's going to happen or not. I'm not real confident in it. All right, let's go, Luis. Luis Diaz in here. Thank you, Luis. SDSU to the Big Twelve. That wouldn't. That would be intriguing, man, for sure. Uh, Stanford could get in over Oregon because of academics. I agree. I think Stanford might. I think Stanford might actually get in the Big Ten before Oregon does. Uh, I know Oregon fans don't want to hear that, but uh, let's talk about the Pac-12 for a minute. John Canzano, who who uh, covers the Pac-12, put out. Some uh, some stuff on his uh, has reported on some stuff. I was going to kind of read it to you guys here, but basically, and Jason Shear, the reporter who covers Arizona, who who has been kind of on top of all this from the get go, shared this out. Now he says on his Twitter, nobody moves into the ESPN offer from the pack, uh, which is something I said earlier. But here's what he here's what John Canzano is saying in his mailbag deal about the Pac-12. He's saying talks between the ESPN and the Pac-12 have been productive. Per our conference insider, we're still in the midst of positive conversations but haven't reached a final offer stage. We've been much more engaged with George, Clive Koff. We're all in sync. We're all in line. We've got some high-level media consultants at the table. Apparently, they've hired sports media advisors, uh, a guy by the name of Doug Perlman, who attended the University of Virginia Law School with George Clive Koff. Multiple sources are telling uh, uh, Canzano that Pac-12 media rights, no Pac-12 media rights news will be available before Labor Day. And, of course, it talks about the Brett McMurphy uh, article talking about Oregon showing interest in the Big Ten. Um, One source in Phil Knight's inner circle. Oh, here, here we go. Uh, no Michael Shield, no Rob Mullins, no Kevin Warren. McMurphy is a good McMurphy is a good reporter. I trust him. I was told early on that Phil Knight and Tinker Hatfield, who were associated with Nike, were interested in exploring some options. Sounds to me like the Nike contingent may be doing the heavy lifting. So it looks like they're the ones involved in discussions, not necessarily Oregon administration. One source in Knight's inner circle told me after USC and UCLA defected to the Big Ten, and now this is told me, I'm talking, this is uh, John Canzano talking here. One source in Knight's Inner Circle told John Canzano that after USC and UCLA defected to the Big Ten, the good news is Phil is working hard to determine the correct path forward and hopefully to determine one that is viable. My guess is his aspirations aren't practical or achievable. But try to tell that to the man that has won most battles in his life that seemed out of reach. So Phil Knight seems to be driving the bus here. He's doing everything in his power, like I said earlier, to get Oregon into the Big Ten. Oregon is a tent pole among the remaining 12 universities in the Pac-12. The prevailing sentiment among conference athletic directors is that Oregon shopped itself around significantly after USC and UCLA announced their departure and learned it didn't have great immediate options. The Pac-12 ADs continue to meet at least once a week. I asked a few of them if Oregon had expressed a desire for unequal revenue sharing or even a shorter media rights deal. Said 1AD, not at all. Oregon hasn't been pounding on the table. I think, like the rest of us, they're interested in seeing what comes of this media rights negotiation. What's interesting about all this is, uh, oh, it also says that a loose partnership between the Pac-12 and ACC is still on the table. That's not out of the equation. And 
he talked about the four corner schools that we've talked about, Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, Colorado, potentially going to the Big 12. And here's what John Canzano apparently asked a Pac-12 South Division athletic director, is that conference actively trying to poach, if the Big 12 is actively trying to poach Pac-12 teams? This athletic director said, and I quote, I don't know where all this stuff comes from. I don't know where I, I don't know where all this stuff comes from. There have been no offers or conversations. I've been in no dark rooms. It's insane. So this AD is telling Canzano that there have been absolutely no talks about any of these schools going to the Big 12. So, you know, who knows if that's true or if he's just, if that's just a smoke screen. It's hard to tell. He says he thinks adding San Diego State makes a lot of sense for the pack because it would get the conference back into Southern California. He also goes on to say, UNLV, SMU, Fresno State, Boise State, I don't know, it feels to me like poaching a Big 12 team or five would be a better option for the Pac-12 than diluting the conference with a few less than ideal candidates. I'd rather have better Texas Tech and Oklahoma State and maybe one or two others. So John Canzano seems to think that Big 12 teams would be willing to go to the Pac-12. I personally don't see that. Now, Maybe, maybe they would see the Pac-12 as more intriguing because they it would get them playing games in California if if assuming Stanford and Cal stay on board. But well, I just don't see why teams would be want want to leave the Big 12 for the Pac-12 because I don't see the Pac-12 as being more stable right now. You guys tell me if I'm wrong here, but why would Baylor, Texas Tech, think about leaving the Big 12? Now I even did a video on TCU possibly going to the Big 10. Now obviously if the Big 10 comes calling, you're out, right? I don't see these schools going to the Pac-12. What what would be the benefit in it? I just don't understand it. Um, but apparently, Oregon being the tent pole team for the Pac-12, they kind of hold all the cards here. If if Phil Knight's able to get his wish and get them into the Big Ten, then that will probably be the end of the Pac-12. But according to some of these sources, Oregon's likelihood of getting in the Big Ten is pretty slim right now, it seems like. I think Phil Knight might be fighting an uphill battle here because I don't know how high Oregon is on the Big Ten's wish list. Uh, I'm missing some of your guys' comments here. I apologize. I probably won't be able to get to all of them. I'll do my best here. Uh, AAR says, as soon as these Pac-12 turncoats step into the Big Ten, their reputation and West Coast brands are destroyed. JS says, Washington is a lot more valuable than Oregon in many ways. Both Stanford, Cal, and Washington spend billions on research and development where schools really make their money. Bingo. And that might, whether we like it or not, that matters to the Big Ten. We can make fun of it all we want to, but it's the truth. You can sell on beaches, West Coast lifestyle and culture, then belly crawl to the Big Ten. It's not going to work. That's your number one rival conference. Joey Daglio says, none of the Pac-12 teams value, especially on the field. Big Ten should get better. TCU, Florida State, and Miami, they bring much more value for recruiting and football on the field. I agree with some of those. I don't see where Baylor really fits. They fit academically. I agree with that, but I don't see where the better fits in the Big Ten. Waco, Texas is not a big market, uh, and I have nothing against Baylor. I respect Baylor. They're doing a great job there. Obviously won a national championship in basketball two years ago. You know, won the Big 12 in football. But we got we forget, folks, Baylor was involved in a very big sexual assault scandal not long ago. Uh, and they and up to, what, a decade and a half, two decades ago, they were absolutely terrible at football. They were one of the worst teams in the country. So uh, we have a tendency to have recency bias in some of these discussions. But but nonetheless, Baylor is definitely on the on the right track. They have a great university president, a great AD. They're doing great things at Baylor. But I just don't think they fit the mold of a Big Ten school. No offense. Hey, I don't even think my school, West Virginia, fits the mold of a Big Ten school. So I'm not throwing shade at Baylor at all. I'm just being honest. The only way Big 12 teams go to the pack is if they are told they add a significant amount of revenue for the pack and not enough for Big 12. Agreed. Stanford and Cal may not jump east too much pride. They do have pride. They do like their pack conference now. Uh, I'll give them that. Uh, something else I want to touch on, too, is, uh, hey, what's up, Trey TV? Trey BTV? No, I am not going to the game, Trey. Uh being in the middle of the week makes it tricky for me to get up there, and also uh, tickets were extremely expensive. So, no, I'm not going. I will be watching it from the comfort of my couch, maybe doing some live streaming, hopefully, at some point. 
but I, I am definitely looking forward to it. Jason Osborne says maybe people see the Pac-12 as more stable because Pac-12 hasn't lost as many teams. Maybe. Maybe so, Jason. That's a great point. B, the Big 12 has lost teams multiple times over the years. Uh, where Pac-12, this is kind of their first big, uh, big gut shot, so to speak, that they've had to take. Uh, CKS says disagree, Joe. There are still as good of options for the Big 10 in the Pac and on the field. Uh, yeah, I, I see what you're saying, CKS. But yeah, another thing too I wanted to touch on was Brett Yormark in the Big Twelve. Brett Yormark is doing a uh, he's a campus tour. Basically, he's touring all the campuses in the Big Twelve, both current Big Twelve teams and future. So he's going to be touring all fourteen campuses. Uh, I think he's got four on the docket for this week. I think he's going to be in Morgantown on Thursday visiting at, with the Mountaineer leadership. Um. He's doing a listening tour. He's seeing what what each school's concerns are, you know, what they see, where they see the conference heading, uh, what they'd like to see happen, and he's going to take all this information back, do a report to all the leadership, and kind of put a plan together. Uh, and he did it. He did a really quick five minute Q and A with some of the media people at Texas Tech. They asked him about the open for business comment. He says yes, expansion is on the table, but open for business is not just about expansion. It means we're looking at all potential revenue streams for this conference. Anything we can do to make this conference more revenue, we're looking at it. That's what he meant by open for business. But he did say that they are the expansion is definitely in consideration. Now, in an interview a few days ago, uh, Baylor AD Mac Brown made a comment, or not Mac Brown, shoot, Mac Rhodes. Baylor AD Mac Rhodes made a comment that uh, the Big 12 was looking to expand. So uh, expansion is definitely on the Big 12's mind. They do want to expand. Now, he didn't go into detail as to who they're looking at, uh, what teams or what conferences they're trying to get teams from or nothing like that. Obviously, he can't say any of that right now anyway, but he did say that expansion was definitely being heavily considered by the Big 12. Personally, this is my opinion. Big 12 needs inventory. The brands we have are not looked at, even though we have very passionate fan bases. Our fans will tune into games. We don't have extremely large fan bases. We are schools from a lot of rural areas. We don't have huge numbers of people. So that means that they need more inventory for the networks to put on television. Uh, that's one reason I think the Big 12 might still hold a slight advantage over the Pac-12 because we have 12 teams and they only have 10. We have more inventory. They could make themselves more valuable by maybe getting some West Coast schools so that they could get more West games in, on the West Coast time zone. Uh, if they could get some schools from the East, now, I don't know who that would be. If the ACC does happen to implode, maybe we could grab a couple of those teams, get more games on the Eastern time zone. But right now we've only got three teams in the East with UCF, West Virginia, Cincinnati. Maybe we could get some more. We could cover all four time zones possibly. That could be something they're looking at. Uh, but I think they just need more inventory. I think they need to get up to 14, 16 teams, maybe more, uh, just so there's enough inventory for these networks. But at the same time, you've got to be selective on what schools you bring in because you don't want to dilute the, the, the revenue base. You don't want to dilute the amount of money the conference is making in, overall because you don't want the current schools making less money. So, for example, uh, you, you bring in, let's just say, oh, I don't know, uh, Boise State. You know, what you got to evaluate, would Boise State actually add revenue to the conference? Uh, yes, they're a great brand. But is their fan base large enough? Is the market large enough to help bring revenue from a TV perspective? Because that's all it's all about TV. It's all about TV networks. It's all about streaming services. It's all about all that. And here's another thing. I first, I've I have been set I have been against uh, a Big 12, Pac 12 merger pretty much from the get-go, but I'm starting to change my mind on that. And here's why. These two conferences together are kind of weak right now. I think we can all admit that. You put these two conferences together, man. You get games in all four time zones. You get a lot of quality brands. You get a lot of quality matchups. I mean, heck, who doesn't want to see Oregon? I mean, I think, look, maybe I'm biased here, but who wouldn't want to see Oregon and West Virginia play? Or Oregon and Cincinnati? Or, uh, you know, Colorado, uh, BYU and Utah being the same conference? I mean, uh, you know, who, who doesn't want to see uh, UCF? play Washington State. I mean, that, that intrigues me. You know, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't move the needle a lot, no. But but you, you get a, a, a conference of 30-some teams, that's 30-some 30, 30 pieces of inventory these networks have. And even if it's not a full-on merger, you do some kind of TV alliance deal, scheduling agreement, 
where these two conferences play each other every year, man. You, you got to do something to bring – you got to do something to, to make yourself stand out. And I'm not sure that the, either of these two conferences on their own are going to be able to do that. I, I just I hate to be negative, but I just don't know that they're strong enough on their own to move the needle. I think they need to consider and, – and it would be terrible for West Virginia because it would increase their travel tremendously. And if a merger did happen, if a merger did happen, I would like to see West Virginia get out of the league. But because I don't, I just don't want our uh, uh, our travel to be, you know, it's bad enough as it is. But that being said, it would be pretty cool to play Oregon. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, but that being said, if we could get more East Coast teams and have an East Coast pod, it would make it easier. Maybe the travel wouldn't be quite as bad. But nonetheless, I digress. I have been against a merger, but I'm I'm starting to open my mind up and consider that an actual real possibility now. Uh, so I've kind of changed my changed my thinking on that. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see what Brett Yormark brings to the table from from a revenue standpoint. And I think there's been a lot of talk too that George that, that your Mark and Kevin Warren are really close. And those two guys are talking to each other every single day. So is there do we see something where the Big Twelve and the Big Ten and the SEC somehow figure out a way to to basically destroy the Pac twelve and the ACC at the same time and absorb their members? Now we might be if they did something like that, then that might be collusion, might be antitrust laws against that stuff. I don't know. I'm no expert on that, but uh, I don't see how they could do that legally, but hey, who knows? Maybe there's ways that you can do it, uh, do it legally. But I just don't see, I really just, I'm I'm right back to the ACC grant of rights. I'm going to harp on this until I'm blue in the face. Uh, I just don't see them getting out of it, man. These grant of rights deals are, are from what I, everything I've read and heard, and they're ironclad and they're hard to get out of. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying it's impossible, but very hard and extremely expensive. It would be up in the hundreds of millions of dollars to get out of the ACC grant rights for teams today because it's there's so many years left uh, on the contract. That's that's the thing. It's a contract document, folks. It's legally binding. Let's see if I can catch up on the comments. Lord Raiden, thanks for hopping in. The Big Ten boxed the SEC in here. The Big Ten makes more now and will in the future. It's going to be worse when they get schools directly in SEC territory. That might be. You might have a good point. Justin Campbell says you think ESPN is trying to negotiate with Notre Dame to ACC to try to make up for the Big Ten market loss. ESPN would help their pockets by spending some money to help. You know what, Justin? Buddy, I had not thought about that. But if if Notre Dame would go to the ACC, that would be a huge boost for ESPN. Then ESPN would have some leverage, or um, the ACC would have some leverage also to get a better deal from ESPN, and it would block Fox from getting uh, uh, getting all of the Notre Dame's, you know, it would block them from getting into the Big Ten and then seeing Fox benefit from it. Great. That's, that's a great point, Justin. I hadn't thought about that, my man. Larry Pilgrim says, Washington, Oregon, Utah have consistent viewers regardless. I agree with that. I agree with that. Those three schools, uh, and believe it or not, Washington State has gotten a lot of viewers too, but I, I think it might be uh, a lot because of that late night window where there's no competition, but they do get their fair share of viewers. Will Clough, Clough, I hope I pronounced your name right, says Big 12 should get San Diego State and Fresno State. I agree with San Diego State. Uh, not really sure about Fresno, though. Don't know enough about them, Will, to, to answer that. Check revenue list. East Carolina, Pitt, Louisville, Syracuse. East, Colorado, Arizona, SDSU, Oregon State, Washington State, West. I didn't think about East Carolina. Uh, I do know that East Carolina has a huge uh, enrollment, and they have a large alumni base. Matter of fact, I think they have the largest en- largest enrollment of any school in the state of North Carolina. That includes UNC, NC State, Duke, all them. Uh, Huffer Billy says, folks on West Coast watch pros, not college. Folks in Illinois, Indiana, Minnesota, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Jersey watch the pros mostly unless their team is a contender. Look at the Big Ten, only OSU is the draw. You got OSU, a little bit of Michigan draws pretty well. Other than that, man, 
Not a lot there. Uh, in my opinion. Uh, Upper Billy says the only reason ACC still gets viewers is because it is in the southeast where people still watch college football. Bingo. And that's what makes Clemson such an attractive addition to the SEC, in my opinion. Big Ten has plenty of viewers. There's a reason they make more than the SEC now and will in the future. Don't see how the SEC passes them in revenue. Uh, SEC knows this and is being very smart on who they add. SEC goes to nine conference games. That's also being talked about. We could see more conference games to help improve the uh, you know the quality of the content, so which will make it more attractive to the networks. What markets are the SEC adding to pass the Big Ten? Big Ten has seven of the top nine markets already. Yeah, that's a good point, Lord Ray. And actually, when I was doing research for my video the other day about TCU, I was looking at the various markets the Big Ten had, man. They've got they've got the top four already. They don't have the Dallas Fort Worth market. So that's one market that the SEC could get. If they could get SMU and TCU, they could get the Dallas Fort Worth market. Uh and uh there was another one, uh the San Francisco market. But if but all indications are the Big Ten's probably going to end up getting Stanford and Cal, or at least one of them. Then they would have that market. So that's why I think TCU to the Big Ten is so intriguing. Even though they're not a huge school, they're not great. They don't do well in research from a research perspective. They don't spend a lot of money on research, but they are very well ranked. They are very high ranked academically. And they would bring the Dallas Fort Worth market. And I think that's intriguing. And heck, why not get TCU and SMU both so up the entire Dallas Fort Worth market? I think that that would be intriguing too. And it gets the SEC or Big Ten, whoever wants them, into Texas. Which the SEC is already going to be in Texas now. Yeah, I don't think the SEC needs Texas, but the Big Ten might. Big Ten might want to go after Texas and really put the screws to the SEC. Florida Red and Big Ten does not have the viewership the SEC has. The network's overpaid the Big Ten. That's what I believe, Coos. I like to see more teams from the East and the Big 12 cut long travel. Lord Raiden, no networks didn't overpay. The Big 10 is going to have their three best games and broadcast every week. So, Outlaw College Football, everybody go check out his channel. He's also a member of Coos's Corner. ACC will be split into fours. It's not ironclad, pretty simple. Eight leave, it goes away. I agree, but I don't know how eight leave at one time. I mean, I don't think the SEC is taking four ACC teams. They might take two, and even if they take four, I don't think the Big Ten's taking the other four because the Big Ten is still focusing, from all reports are, they're still focusing a lot on some West Coast schools. So if they go get, I don't know, Stanford and Cal, Washington, Oregon, then who are they going to take from the Big Ten or from the ACC? And we got to keep in mind, whether we like it or not, outlaw, and I know you hate talking about academics, the Big Ten takes academics extremely seriously. The only time they've let the only time they've really uh, not a, not obeyed that rule was when they took Nebraska and Nebraska's not terrible academically, but they're not up to Big Ten standards. But Nebraska bought a massive brand in football, and at the time, were AAU accredited. Honestly, I think somebody in Nebraska knew somebody in the Big Ten because I they really don't fit. They don't fit geographically. They don't fit academically. I don't know how they got in, but they did. And I don't think they're letting them go because Nebraska draws a lot of TV viewership. They're a very attractive brand. Whether I know they've not been very good on the field, but they still have a very large fan base and a very passionate fan base. But back to back to what I'm saying, the Big Ten is going to be extremely choosy when it comes to who they take, and the academics is a huge factor. Whether whether we can admit it, or not. I mean that's why they took Rutgers. They took Rutgers to get the New York market, and because Rutgers was a very highly rated academic institution, that's the reasons. Two reasons. It had nothing to do with their football performance. Uh, USC and UCLA, two very highly rated academic institutions, gave them the L.A. market. Uh, so I think they're going to look at big markets, and I think they're going to look at academics. I know you don't agree with that outlaw, but, I mean, you can look at the schools the Big Ten has. Every school in their league, with the exception of one, is highly rated academically. Uh, you, you can't – you can't. it's hard to debate that when the numbers prove that out. And even Notre Dame, even though Notre Dame's not AAU, if they would join, they're also very highly rated academically in other in other areas. So that you know, Notre Dame would be a fit there, even though they're not AAU accredited. And Kevin Warren has made it clear, AAU is not a requirement for future membership. They like like it; it's it's a plus, but it's not required. 
But yeah, I mean, it's possible that the ACC can implode if you get, like I said earlier, maybe the Big 12 comes into play as well and takes a couple of those teams, then I could see it happening. Uh, maybe maybe the SEC gets, I don't know, Clemson, Miami, Florida State. Uh, I don't know. Clemson, Miami, Florida State, and UNC. And then the, the Big Ten gets Virginia, Boston College, and uh, Syracuse, and somebody else. You know, look at some academic schools. Uh, and then the Big 12 goes and gets Virginia Tech, NC State, and Pitt. You know, I don't, in Louisville. You know, I don't know. I'm just throwing out names here. So it's possible. I'm not saying it's out of the equation, but it's going to be extremely, extremely tough uh, for that to get broken because I just don't know that there's four teams that – I don't know if there's four teams one specific conference is going to want is my point. Make sure I'm not missing any – by the way, if you guys want to make sure I see your uh, see your comment, you can leave me a super chat. It'll highlight it for me or put it at the top where I can see it because uh, I'm starting to miss some of these now. Glad you're doing this, buddy. Thank you, Mountaineer Paul. Thanks for hopping on. That Mountaineer Paul is a great supporter of mine. Always sharing my stuff on Twitter and uh, support me. Appreciate that. Warren can say whatever he wants. It isn't up to him. AU matters. School presidents decide these things, not Warren. I didn't say it didn't matter. He said it wasn't a requirement. Uh, I, there's a difference there. I pray Clemson goes to SEC. I think Clemson will be a good fit in the SEC. Everybody, Paul, sounds like you don't know what you're talking a bit or better. Clemson isn't coming to the Big Ten. Dennis Haley, see what he has to say. That medical school in Omaha wants nothing to do with the admins working out of the Lincoln campus, too. That medical school in Omaha has zero to do with the Lincoln campus. Okay. Uh, Nebraska should still be AAU. They lost it because their medical school isn't in Lincoln. Who's 100% right? Eight ACC teams leaving is a long shot. I mean, that, that's half the conference, man. That's hard to do. Thanks for not inviting me. Uh, you told me you worked on Monday's Outlaw. Sorry, brother. Uh, but I've got an idea for our next show, Outlaw. I'm going to shoot you a message later, by the way. Um, yeah, I just don't I just don't see it, guys. I mean, I, to me, it would be extremely, extremely difficult for eight teams to leave the ACC at the same time. I mean, I, it just... It would take a lot, a lot, a lot of work behind the scenes. It would take multiple. It would take multiple conferences being involved. And there again, like I said earlier, would you have antitrust laws being broken in that case? If if you have two or three conferences going in together to destroy a single conference, it seems to me like there would be antitrust laws against that. And then you start talking about lawsuits, and the SEC and Big Ten don't need to be caught up in lawsuits. They they don't need to. They're 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 doing well just the way they are. They don't need to be caught up in lawsuits. Uh. Big Dan T, a big supporter of the show. Been trying to super chat. It will not let me. Not sure what's going on. Sorry, man. I don't know either. Uh, if anybody else is having that issue, let me know. I may need to address it with YouTube or, or StreamYard. I'm using StreamYard. Uh, maybe there's a there's something going on with StreamYard. But I appreciate your thought, Big Dan T. You've always been a big supporter of the show, man. Uh, but it's definitely nothing I've done. It must be something. Sometimes these, uh, sometimes YouTube has glitches, and sometimes uh, StreamYard can have glitches. Uh, Huffer Billy says, "When the Big Ten wanted to cancel due to COVID, that did it for me with the Big Ten. That was a little bit nuts, wasn't it? When you look at viewership, only four teams in the ACC have above average value. North Carolina actually doesn't have top viewership; they are below four Big Twelve teams. What makes North Carolina attractive, uh, Larry? A couple different things. One." North Carolina is one of the fastest growing states in the country right now, population wise. Neither the SEC nor the Big Ten have a presence in the state of North Carolina right now. They both would love to get a footprint in that state. North Carolina is the flagship university in the state, which it's assumed that flagship schools usually have larger fan bases. And I think in this case, it's probably holds true. I think UNC has a larger, I'd have to go back and look at the numbers, but I think UNC has a larger fan base than both UNC, I mean, than both NC State 
and Duke and Wake Forest. So UNC gets you into a new state, a new footprint, which allows you to sell your subscription services to an entirely new group of people. Okay. And it also, for the Big Ten's sake, North Carolina is a very highly rated academic school. They would also fit from a Big Ten perspective there. I think they might be AAU accredited. I don't know 100% for sure. I think they are, which would make it even better. Uh, but you're right. Their viewership's not over the top, but they fit in a lot of other ways. I mean, Rutgers don't get good viewership either, folks. Let's face it. Rutgers does not get a lot of TV viewership. But they want it in the city of New York. The Big Ten wanted to be in New York because it, they can sell their subscription services to a lot more people. I mean, there's up to 15 million possibilities there with people or households, rather, that they can sell their subscription services to. Uh, Anthony says, what's the next team that will join the Big Ten? Uh, I think it'll be likely either Washington, Oregon, or Stanford is my guess. One of those three. John Carpenter, thanks for the comment, says, I get the feeling this is the year Neil and the crew turn around. I can see their ceiling at 11-1, and one, but more than likely 10-2 and two or 9-3 and three get show again. Coos, let's go Mountaineers. Uh, I think their ceiling is 10-2, and two, but I also think they could very easily go 6-6 six and six because when you look at that freaking schedule, man, it is brutal. Absolutely brutal. Some of our toughest opponents are all away games. Pitt, Virginia Tech, Texas, all on the road. And that's just a short list. There's more. AAR says, I read ACC Grant yesterday. Notre Dame is a partial member. Nothing about exit or dissolving in there. They can renegotiate, it seems. They can if ESPN wants to. Would ESPN be motivated to do that? That's the question. Syracuse has a bigger fan base than Rutgers. They do. I was actually surprised to see that Syracuse has one of the biggest fan bases in the country. So Syracuse could be an attractive addition to some to some other conferences, man. Um, they might be a good, you know, they might fit into Big Ten because I think they're pretty highly rated academically too. Big Ten might ought to look at Syracuse, but they don't. I guess they already got Rutgers in the New York market. They don't need two schools, right? Don't forget about Boston College. Don't forget about Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech brings the Atlanta Georgia market. That's another big market the Big Ten don't have. The Atlanta market. It's a top ten market. Notre Dame is the next to join. I don't. Maybe I just don't see it. I think Notre Dame is going to keep their independence, man. Uh, Notre Dame seems like they're only going to join a conference when they absolutely have to. UNC has a good football history and program, and not, and don't forget their basketball. Syracuse fans are not rabid college football viewers in that New York region. Yeah, they like their Buffalo Bills up there. Have you watched the press conference from Reagan, Wright, et cetera? Even Reagan is talking about C.J. Donaldson. I've never in all my years seen a freshman get this much hype, dude. I have not watched him today. I plan on doing that later. I'm excited to watch it. Hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping to even get a video out on it, on the on the press conferences and my thoughts. But uh, I'm excited about C.J. Donaldson. I think the guy's going to see the field early and often. Uh, I'm excited about what he can bring to the table. Uh, Syracuse fans don't show up. Agree about the schedule, dude. Tough for sure. BC fans don't show up either. I, I agree, man. I agree, but apparently nobody cares. It looks like the Big Ten doesn't care about that. The Big Ten doesn't seem to care about who shows up. They care about what market you're in. I mean, I when they added Rutgers in Maryland, that proved to me they don't give flying part how passionate your fans are. All they care about is where you're located and where you rank from an academic standpoint. That's all they cared about in those additions. Uh, I don't see any other way. There's no other argument for adding those schools, in my opinion. Boston College, Brent Moritz, thanks for hopping in, man. Boston College and Wake Forest are definitely screwed. Syracuse and Duke are in danger of getting left out. Agreed. BC and Q's fans didn't stay in their area. They moved out. All the Big Ten slots are going to be taken, and Notre Dame is going to be left out. Well, you know what? That's okay. Notre Dame seems to be fine on their own. And Notre I'm sure, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Notre Dame seems to have enough clout. They can get in any conference they want when they want. So I don't think they're too concerned about it. Uh, they are not active in college football. Talking about Syracuse and BC fans. Well, for Billy, I would think that too, man. Uh, but I, I would agree. I don't understand it either. But 
I mean, look what the Big Ten did. I mean, they added Rutgers. I mean, they added Maryland. And they got them for the D.C. market and the New York market. Now, from what I understand, the reasoning behind that is, based on what I've read on this, just use the ACC network, or the Big Ten network in this case as an example. The Big Ten network is a, is a paid subscription. You have to pay money to subscribe to the Big Ten network. When they look at New York City, they look, okay, there's 15 million households. That's 15 million chances for people to buy the Big Ten network. They, I don't, I don't, they don't care if they watch the games or not on Big Ten Network because they got to pay a monthly fee. You have to pay, what, 10 bucks a month, whatever it is, for the Big Ten Network, whether you watch it or not. They don't care about it. So if they can get the Big Ten Network into, what, a third of those households, five million households, look at the millions of dollars they're making, whether those people watch the games or not. I think that's the thinking here. I think they're looking just beyond just the, uh, you know, just the, just the whether people are watching or not, but how many people can we get to subscribe to these networks? There's a word for it, and I can't think of it off the top of my head. Uh, but that's basically what it is. Everyone has talked about the West Coast the East has markets too. Markets matter. Do you understand anything? <laughs> All right, guys, be respectful here. But yeah, I'm gonna talk about West Virginia just for a minute, uh, and I'm gonna jump off of here, but. West Virginia, Neil Brown still has not named a starting quarterback. He claims that, and I haven't watched the press conference. This is, this is what I've read on on uh, some some media outlets that have put this up on Twitter. Apparently, he said that they still haven't finalized. They think they know who it's going to be, but they haven't made a final decision yet. But it will be announced before the pit game. Uh, I see a super chat, but I think that. But back to West Virginia, I think that means. Uh, personally, I think it's it's all strategy. I think Neil Brown. I think they made their decision. That they just don't want Pitt to know who it is yet. They're just, you know, just a little bit of strategic. Uh, Pitt's doing the same thing. They haven't announced their starting quarterback yet either. Uh, so, you know, Pitt fans were on Twitter talking trash about West Virginia for trying to hide it. I'm like, look, dude, your team's doing the same thing. They've not named a starting quarterback yet either. And, heck, I would go even further. Well, now you know what? I'm saving that for a video. I'm not going to spoil it. Big Dan T says, thanks for the 999 Super Chat, Big Dan T. I'll be in my buckskins at Pitt screaming, eat S. Pitt. Y'all look for me. Great job, Coos. It would not let me say S in Super Chat. I think the ACC is going under. Okay, so that explains it. Yeah, certain words, I guess it flags or something. Uh, I don't have that word. I don't have that word banned. Uh, so I'm surprised it let you didn't let you. But anyway, I appreciate the Super Chat. Appreciate the support, Big Dan T. He's one of my biggest supporters. Uh, carriage fees. That's what I was trying to think of, Jason. Carriage fees. The carriage fees for Big Ten Network increased quite a bit in the New York City and D.C. markets. That made the Big Ten a lot of money, making it worth taking Maryland and Rutgers. Carriage fees is the word I was trying to think of. The carriage fees is what they're looking at, man. You can get into a market with millions of households. That's millions of chances for you to m get more of those carriage fees. It makes the conference millions, man. I'm telling you. That's why markets matter now. Uh, you should ban 13 to 9. <laughs> Man, I wish I could. Uh, probably ought not to, though. It might not be fair to my pit followers. Big Ten doesn't get carriage fees for New York City. Why not, Dennis? Why wouldn't they get carriage fees for New York City? Notre Dame, everybody says Notre Dame should go to the Big Ten, but if not, SEC will take them. Absolutely, they would. Any, any conference in America will take them. It would be crazy not to. Notre Dame, the SEC, LOL, LOL, LOL. Thanks for the laugh. SEC would want Notre Dame to join. Carriage fees are about a school's location. Rutgers is in Jersey. Yeah, but you, you don't have to be. For example, it, Morgantown, West Virginia, and Pittsburgh share a TV market. So wouldn't New Jersey and New York City be the same? Uh Osborne says the New York City market includes the northern half of Jersey. So now we got guys over and over arguing over carriage fees. Look, I don't know, guys. I don't know how carriage fees work. Uh, but from what I've read, that's the reason they look. Why else would they want to be in New York? You know? That's the market, but carriage fee borderlines aren't the same thing. Sorry. That, that might not be. I'm not. I'll be honest. I don't know. I don't know enough about it to. I can't talk educationally uh, for 
intelligently, I should say, about carriage fees because I don't know much about them. I just know what I've read. Leo says, to talk West Virginia, what about CBS's preseason ring for the basketball team, number nine? It's fair. I mean, we lost like 98% of our production or some crazy number like that. I think we'll do much better than that because of the transfers we got in, Leo. Uh, got in some, some experienced guys who played Power 5 basketball. Uh, but, it, you know, just like the football team, guys are giving, basing our ranking on what we lost, not what we brought in. Uh, and until the guys we brought in proved themselves on the field and or the court, then we're going to get ranked low. And, I, you know, I guess that's really – it used to upset me, but looking back on it, looking at it, it's, it's fair. You can't really argue that. Uh, Leo Cole, it's ridiculous ranking for us. We will be better. Yeah, I think we will too. But like I said, outside pundits don't know what's going on inside the program, so they have nothing else to go on. Uh, I'm not sure who you're talking about, Lord Raiden, but Matador Mike says on a football note, Tyler Shuck won the Texas Tech. I did see that, Matador Mike. Uh, I think we all expected him to win it, but uh, congrats to him for winning the job, and I think from what I hear, he's going to be a great quarterback for you guys. Dennis Hattie says, go and look at cable companies and how state laws dictate cable internet regulations. Includes carriage fees. <clears throat> I may actually do that, Dennis, because I'm curious to know that myself. Well, guys, look, I'm going to jump off of here. Uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in to the, to the live stream here, talk a little bit about conference realignment, talk a little bit about Oregon, Florida State, those kind of things. It was easier to do it on a live stream than to try to make multiple videos on this. So don't forget to hit the like button as you're going out, guys. It'll still help the, the views once this video gets posted. Uh, don't forget. You know, if you guys ever want to check out some of my merch, you can go check it out in my merch store. Uh, join the channel if you want to. Uh, there's different perks that come with that, including a discount on the merch if you're a Mountaineer Maniac level member. And uh, also, there's uh, other perks that go with it every now and again. If I do some, some kind of special video or interview, I may release it earlier to my to my members. At some point, I will do member only stuff. I just haven't gotten around to doing that yet. Kind of dropped the ball on that. But anyway, become a channel member. Big Dan T says, eat S pit. I, I'm going to go ahead and say it, eat shit pit. Thank you to Big Dan T for the 499 Super Chat, for all your support, my brother. Uh, I really appreciate all you've done for my channel, all the support you've shown for my channel. Upper Billy Paul says, Lord, you really don't understand the future. <laughs> He's, I know him and Dennis and Lord Raiden are all going back and forth here. I'm not going to get into that. But All right, guys, I appreciate everybody's support. Don't forget to hit the like button on your way out. And Q Country, Q Country Roads, baby.